Right, the last of the proof by inductions from the maths camp. This time for a matrix, but matrix algebra, not elements in the matrix. Uh, given a matrix A such that A squared is 3A minus 2I, show that A to the N is 2 to the N minus 1A plus 2 minus 2 to the N I. Given a non singular square matrix, meaning it's got an inverse, such that, and here's a description of the matrix, A squared equals 3A minus 2i. Non singular big, so this can be rearranged to read a times something equals i, that's something being its inverse, saying that if that's the case, then a to the n equals 2 to the n minus 1a plus 2 minus 2 to the n i, where i would be the equivalent identity matrix in this case. Starting same as before. Consider it at the start. Is it true to begin with? Except this time it's saying we're considering n greater or equal to 2. So at the start consider n equals 2. Is it true if n equals 2 in this statement? Well, <clears throat> from the left hand side I have a to the power 2 which is 3a minus 2i. From the right hand side I have this expression which would be 2 when n is 2 to the power 2 minus 1 lots of a plus 2 minus 2 to the power 2i. 4 take away 1 is 3 so it's 3 lots of a. 2 take away 4 is minus 2 so minus 2i. Both sides are the same. The left hand side equals the right hand side, which means it's true at the start. It's true for n equals 2. Now, the assumption. Assume it's true for some arbitrary point k along the series, which means that if it were true there, I would have a to the k equals just replacing all the n by k's. I would have a to the k equals 2 to the k minus 1 times a plus 2 minus 2 to the k loss of the identity element. Call that 1. And then consider the next step. I don't need to go back over this. We said it in the previous ones. Then consider n equals k plus 1. So n equals k plus 1 means I've got this. It means I've got a to the k plus 1 which would equal a times a to the k. Now I need to go up to the top. And so here I'm using this inductive hypothesis straight away. I've got a to the k plus 1 equals a times a to the k, which means it would be a times whatever this says a to the k is equal to. So a times both of these parts, 2 to the k minus 1 times a, plus a times this as well, a times 2 to the 2k i. These are matrices, these are just multiplying constants, so I could take that over to this part, put the multiplying factor at the front, it's just a number, so I've got that a squared, same here, 2 minus 2 to the k is just a multiplying number, take it to the front, a times i is the same as i times a, it's just A, because I is just the identity element, the equivalent of multiplying by 1 in matrices. Now, A squared was already defined in the first part. I'll just rub that off. So in the first part, A squared was defined as this. I've got 2 to the k minus 1 times A squared, and A squared was defined as 3A minus 2I. Then I've got plus 2 minus 2 to the k A. I might need some room, so I'll take this down out of the way. And then you can see where it's heading. I've got A's and I've got I's. I want to gather this up, so I've got a certain number of A's and a certain number of I's, and I want that to be the same as the pattern I wanted to establish. So I'll need to multiply this out. So I've got 3 times this, 3 times 2 to the k minus 1, lots of A, minus 2 times 
2 to the k minus 1, lots of i, plus over here, 2 minus 2 to the k, lots of a. I can take these a's together and see how many of them I've got all together. The i's, I'm quite fine with the i's, I'll just put them down now. In fact, I'll put the plus first. So I've got two ones or two, so I've got plus two, and then do the subtraction minus. I'll leave this this way just now. I can mention that afterwards. Just reverse that to put the positive term first. Then in this lot, I've got three times two to the k, minus three, not left myself a lot of room, plus two, minus two to the k. So that means I've got three lots of two to the k, minus one lot of two to the k, so I've got two lots of 2 to the k, minus 1, negative 3 plus 2 is 1, i, plus, oh, I'll just put this down, they can hold hands and do their index work together. So 2 times 2 to the k, one more factor of 2, so that's going to become 2 k to the plus, one, uh, sorry, 2 to the power k plus 1, take away 1 lots of a, plus, same here, 2 minus, one more factor of 2, 2 to the k plus 1, lots of i, which is exactly what the initial statement said. Sorry, I need to clear away this space at the top. This initial statement said that you should have a to the n equaling 2 to the n minus 1, lots of a, and 2 minus 2 to the n, lots of i. So if that were true for a to the k plus 1, then this statement should be the same as that one, only with the n's replaced by k plus 1's. And it's true. All the n's have ended up being replaced by n k plus 1's. Which means, if it were true for n equals k, then it's certainly true for the next one along. True for n equals k plus 1. But since it was true at the very start, oh, sorry, I have to go to the top. Since it was true for n equals 2, then it's true for 3, and if it's true for 3, it's true for 4, etc, etc. Since it's true for n equals 2, that means it must be true, whoop, I'll use my symbol, it must be true for all n, where n were the natural numbers and n was greater than or equal to 2. Proving question 1.24 by induction.